get started. Um, I think that, and, and this is just what I believe. All right, so take it for take it for what it's worth. But I don't remember. I was having this conversation yesterday. I don't remember a time in like recent history where everybody I talk to that's in business, I mean just about everybody I talk to that's in business is just having an awesome year. You know, um, we're already in May and um, I know I, I, just everybody's having like record, record years, record starts to the year and we're almost midway through which is pretty amazing. Um, I think that over the next two to three years, um, I think there's a big opportunity for smart business owners, and this is learning lessons from the past. I think that there is an opportunity here to create a business that regardless of what happens after this period, because we all know that it always comes to, I don't want to say an end, let's just say it changes, right? And so right now, things are really, really, really good. And so we as business owners have to be smart about this and take advantage of this while it's good because here's what's going to happen and and look I I I've, I've been on the wrong side of this and I'm consciously you know now that I'm older <laughs> you know um, and I, with all of the experience um, of all of these years as many of you also have you know very well that there are these periods where Business is really, 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 really good. And then there are periods where business is not so good. It gets bad, if you will. The companies, the people that get wealthy, that get rich, make money here while we're going up. They have cash so that when it goes to the other side, they buy up stuff at discounted prices. That is real estate, businesses, trucks, equipment, people, right? So I would just say to you, pay attention to this. Pay attention to kind of what's going on here and really think about growing your business. What I want to talk to you about is how do you do it in the home improvement business and really it's in any business. So I'm going to give you the, the real key to big profit, the real key to wealth. Okay, it's simple. It's simple. It's not easy, but it's simple. And if, if you, we get this now, we, and I mean all of us as business owners, regardless of the business that we're in, if we get this now, we set ourselves up for later for later, when the real big opportunities to grow wealth come. There are opportunities now, but there's opportunity now to make money, to make profits. But, you know, and, and I'm not going to get into this whole thing, but a long time ago I met this guy, brilliant guy. Um, they owned a bunch of businesses, and the business that I was dealing with was a youth hostel business. They had a bunch of youth hostels around the around the the world and he said something fascinating to me he said that him he had, it was him and a partner one of them focused on their profit and loss statement on their income statement basically what money are we making today the other one focused on their balance sheet the balance sheet. So there's a difference between profit and wealth. They don't necessarily go together unless you put some strategies in place to take the profit from your income statement 
and move it over onto your balance sheet to build wealth. All right. So that's kind of how I'm, I'm going to start this off. Just some ideas for you to think about. We're going to get into practical now here of what we can do right now to make more profit and to set ourselves up for wealth later. But really kind of think about what, what I've just told you. Right. Really think about that and think about, OK, how do I over these next whatever it's going to be? I don't know. I'm not a forecaster and I'm not going to make any prediction. All I know is that all indications are that for the next two or three years, we're going to be in a pretty big, nice growth phase. There's a lot of pent up demand. There's a lot of money that's been on the sidelines for years. And that money is starting to come back into the economy. And so that's good for all of us, but we just have to be smart about the opportunity and what we do with it. So, with all of that said, <laughs> let's go. We'll, let's go into um, today's presentation. So, um, this kind of goes with what I was just saying. So, you know, here's the question that I have for you: Business is great today. Almost everybody I talk to, and again, it's been a long time since it's been like this. Almost everybody I talk to is just busy. Busy. Business is good. Right? But what are you going to do to keep it that way through 2020? And I picked 2020 just because it's a nice round number. You know? It could be 2025. It could be 2030. But what are you going to do to keep it that way and beyond? Okay? When it ends as it will or change let's say let's not say it'll, it's going to end let's say it's going to change when it changes what are you going to do how are you going to be positioned all right so once you understand this golden key it leads to a few things one is it's going to lead to higher close rates um, much higher close rates, 40 to 60 percent close rates as opposed to 25 to 30 percent close rate. Less price resistance, less price resistance, um, premium pricing rather than just getting by pricing. Um, lower lead costs, really important. Higher profits, of course, greater equity value. You understand this principle that I'm going to show you. Your business will have greater equity value. I can't get too deep into it. That's a whole nother conversation for another day. If it's something you guys are interested in, just let me know. And um, I'll put a, pre I've done presentations before on how you build equity and how you position a home improvement business to sell. Um, I haven't really done it in a, uh, in a webinar format, I've done it live in small groups, um, but if it's something you guys are interested in, um, let me know and I'll put a presentation together um, on that and share with you some of the key strategies. But this is one of them right here that we're going to talk about today. And then ultimately, greater equity value, higher profits, if done properly, should translate to more wealth for you and for your family and also, and also for your people and also for your people. So it's not only about us, right? It's about also how do we bring people with us? How do we bring people with us? You know, I don't think that, I'm not of the mind that, of, of uh, it being a zero sum game, that if I get wealthier, that other people have to be less wealthy in order for me to be wealthier. I believe that everybody can be wealthier. All right. And so that's one of my things is I just want to make sure that the people around me are also um, growing wealthy at the same time that I am. So if you want to achieve long term staying power in this business, this is really important. Long term staying power. We all know of companies that have shut down and gone away. Big companies, companies that have been around for a long time. You want to build wealth for your for you and for your family and for your team. If you want to not be a slave to your business, then you've got to commit to creating customers for life. 
because the relationship with your customers is what will drive your future success and wealth. Now, believe me, I I did this wrong. Now, a lot of you know me. I, I have this slide in here. Um, I'm going to skip over this. Um, I think for those of you that don't know me, um, my background is in home improvement. I'm not a marketing guy that found the home improvement industry. I'm a home improvement guy that was really good at marketing and got into the marketing side of the business. Okay, um, we work with a lot of the top companies in the industry. I'm fortunate to be inside of literally hundreds of home improvement companies. Um, and so that's all you need to know about me um, if you don't know me. Um, so we all remember, or those of us that have been in business for more than 10 years, we remember what happened in 08, 09, and 10. The bottom fell out bottom fell out of, of business. Um, it was bad. Businesses shut down. People lost everything. Me, me and my family being one of them. Lost everything. Um, and it, some of it could be avoided. Some of it could be avoided. And I, I'm not going to go into all of the things, but the one thing that is a constant, the one thing that if you look at successful companies in the home improvement space, the one thing that you're going to see that is a constant is that there is relationship with customer. Relationship with customer, because that's where the wealth comes in. So today, starting right now, if you're not doing everything that you can to like put your arms around that customer, and make sure that you keep them in your circle, in your business, as a referral source for you, as an opportunity for more business down the road, as a word of mouth, as a review online, you're missing out. And believe me, it, as good as it is now, as good as it is now, it will be, if you don't do this, it will be that bad when things turn around. Because if you don't have relationship with your customers, all your business goes away. All your business goes away. I've seen it. I remember, I remember in 08 or 09, both years, but we, I, I was part of a um, high-end landscaping uh, business. It was actually my best friend's business. And we thought, well, why don't we take my marketing and his skill and kind of come together and put together a landscape business. We actually did really, really well. Um, I remember we were looking for people to work. This guy comes in and this guy was in the landscape business. He was looking for a job. Now this guy, this guy had a business, all right? And from the run up, from 2002 to 2007, I mean, this guy was, I, I, the guy was an idiot. Let's face it, the guy was an idiot. Absolute, when it comes to, I don't know what he was like in his personal life, but when it came to business, the guy was a complete idiot. Should have never been in business, but guess what? He was in business and he was making money. He was making money and then he was riding the real estate, the real estate boom, so he bought a house he couldn't afford, right? He lived really well. And then he was just went from one job to another to another, making money, spending all of the money, and then going in debt on top of it. Well, guess what? Here he was sitting in our office looking for a job where he was making in his own business, whatever, 150000 The job we had for him was maybe a $70,000 a year position. Maybe. And he was like, needed the job, right? Because his business was gone. It wasn't like it slowly started to collapse. No, it went away. Boom. Because his, he had no relationship with anybody. He had one or two people that would feed him work. But once that dried up, he was done. He was finished. His customers, all of those jobs that he did, all those landscape jobs that he did, because he had no relationship with any of those people, he could not take that few years of business success 
and parlay that into a few more years. If he had just been able to hold on another three years, things started to turn around in 11 and 12, right? Whereas in our business, well, we had me as a marketing guy, but also my partner, my best friend, had amazing relationships with people. And I came in, one of the first things I did was I went and I grabbed onto those relationships because I learned this lesson the hard way, right? I learned this lesson the hard way. So the thing is, is that what we've got to commit to now is we've really got to commit to how do we today wow our customers, wow our customers and deliver an experience in such a way that they um, not only do they want to have a relationship with us, but they're going to go and tell other people about it, right? This is your real path to profit, wealth, and freedom in this business, right? Profit, wealth, and freedom. You're going to make more money now. You're going to build your wealth for later. And you're not going to be a slave to your business. This is the key. I'm, I'm telling you, I've been doing this for 25 years. There's nothing else, right? I mean, I, I shouldn't say there's nothing else. you got to be smart about certain things and about how you run your business. But your underlying fundamental core thing is you got to have a base of fans. you got to have a base of people that are going to support you, that are going to support you, whether things are good or things are bad, right? Why were we able to, during that time, all these landscape companies were going, all these window companies were going out of business, going out of business, going out of business. There was a few that survived. One of them was my client, Charlie Gundell. He survived. Now, it was ugly. It was ugly for a while. But he survived. And not only did he, he made it through that period, but when things started to turn around, because of that relationship that he had, which, by the way, was what got him through 8, 9, 10, and 11, that's what got him through. You talk to him, he will tell you this. My relationship with my customers is what got me through those terrible years when 90% of his competition was gone out of business because they had no relationship with anybody. He survived and today, today, he is one of the wealthiest contractors I know. He makes more money than he's ever made in his life and he's got an amazing business. Amazing. That business is so solid now. It's, it's, it's impenetrable, right? It's, in, it, it's, I shouldn't say it's indestructible, but it's pretty damn close for a home improvement business, all right? So I made this mistake. I made this mistake, right? So some of you know that we used to own a, a handyman business, one of the largest in the country. And when we started the business, I knew, I knew it was a relationship business. Stay in touch with your customers. They'll feed you. They'll feed you. But guess what? I got lazy. I got lazy. And I found that, hey, if I write an ad, which I was really good at, still am, wrote an ad and I got the phone to ring, I could just place an ad in the paper and it was easy. I'd get lots of phone calls, lots of phone calls because once the ad worked, I didn't really have to do too much. I could move on to something else. Well, then we had a newsletter that we started doing very early on in the business, but guess what? The phone was ringing so much. We had so much business coming in. We were growing so fast. It's like, ah, man, a newsletter is a lot of work. Keeping in touch with your customers is a lot of work. Well, guess what? You know, after four or five years, how many years? Wait a minute. We started in 2000. Addie came in in like 05, 06, and she said, what are you guys doing? You have a business that's all about relationships, and it's all about getting in the house and staying in the house for as long as you can be in the house. And you guys are doing nothing to stay in touch with your customers. It's like, oh, yeah, we used to do that. We used to do that the first year, and then we stopped doing it. Well, she came in and completely took it over, and we went from a miserable 15% repeat and referral, which was almost all probably by accident, admittedly, to over 50% of our business repeat and referral. Brought our lead costs down and, and gave us, like, a solid a, a solid. Uh, a business that we could then build on, which we actually sold to this guy and the other guy's not in the picture, but we sold that company to to this guy and uh, another guy, 
All right. So I've made the same mistake. I've learned the hard way uh, how to do it. So today, you know, why do we want to wow our customers? Why do we want to create that relationship? Well, you've got to get your customers to talk about you online, offline, everywhere possible, and you want them to brag about you. You want them to be raving fans. You know, I do presentations about the customer experience and about creating raving fans. This is what you've got to do. You've got to make your customer, we call it sticky. We want them to be sticky to you and to your company and to your business, right? We know today that reviews will make or break you, reviews online. Business has changed, right? So you've got to not really only focus on product, but you've got to focus on customer experience. When we talk about differentiation, like how do you differentiate yourself from one company, you know, one company to, to your competitors, really, you can't really differentiate yourself by product. None of us has, you know, one of these things. You know, we don't have an iPhone. We didn't create an iPhone. You know, we have windows, we have roofing, we have siding, we have bathrooms, plumbing, HVAC. Everybody sells the same stuff, right? The difference is going to be in the customer experience. That's where your differentiation is going to come. And if you're different enough and you love your customers and you care about your customers enough, they will pay more to be with you, to do business with you, and they will wait for you and they will support you. I have a client. Some of you know them. Aries Roofing. They've been with us for... Uh, seven years now, 2017, seven years, seven years. Incredible business. They did 16, 17, 18 million dollars last year. Over 60% of that business was from the relationships that they have. And by the way, they're more expensive than everybody else and it's common knowledge and people are willing to wait for them. They're willing to wait to have somebody give them an, an estimate to just to come out and look and inspect the project and then they're willing to wait to have the job installed. You must completely and totally differentiate yourself from the competition. Now, one of those, and I'm going to go through this a little bit quickly. I'm going to give you one big uh, 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 activity that you could do here that makes this process a, a, a little bit easier. Okay, but today it's really all about when you think about the customer experience. It's about designing, designing. I use that word purposely and executing an exceptionally memorable experience. Now, I don't care what you call your experience, it just makes sure it's exceptional and it's memorable, all right? So you've got to think about and, and how, how do we become world class? How do we become first class? How do we become the company that is, our, is the go-to company for exterior solutions, for plumbing, for HVAC, for bathrooms, right? First thing, one of the things is you want to learn from the best, right? And I do a whole presentation on this, and I'm not going to go into all of this in detail. But one of the things, here's, here's one recommendation that I have for all of you. When it comes to customer experience, play prospect and play customer of your own business. I just did a thing. I was just at Tony Hody's event, and 100 people in the room. And I asked, in the room I asked, how many of you have shopped your own business? I couldn't believe it. Only three hands went up in a room of 100 people. Three hands went up. If you haven't shopped your business, boy, you, you're, you may be in for a rude awakening. You need to do it. Now, when thinking about customer experience, here's what you want to look at. You want to think about your customer experience, right, from 
each interaction point with your customer. In the home improvement business, you'll see here on the screen, there's four major touch points. The phone, whether it's an in inbound, uh, your first call uh, uh, for, for a lead, or somebody calling you back, or a customer calling into your business, number one place is the phone. Number two is the in-home sales presentation. Three is your installation, and number four is post-project. The thing to do is when you play customer, think about every interaction point in your, in, in your um, process and think about Disney. Think about what would Walt do in that situation to wow his customer at that interaction point, right? At that interaction point on the phone, what do I have to say? What do I have to, how do my people have to be acting, right? in order to have the customer or the prospect say, wow, these guys are different. Wow, right? That's what you're looking for. And you've really got to think about this. Again, we can't do it here on this limited webinar, but think about it. Just think about every interaction point and how do you make it and turn it into a wow experience something that, look what he said, do what you do so well that when people see you do it, they want to see you do it again. How do you make, in the contracting business, how do you make somebody want to see you do it again? That's repeat business. That's the formula for repeat business, right? And then how do you get them to bring others so they could see how you do it? That's bragging. How do you get them to go out there and brag and tell the world about how amazing you are, right? These are the questions that you want to be asking yourself. So you want to be thinking about all of your interaction points. So with the phone, how's your phone answered? How is your prospect or customer made to feel? Um, who's answering your phone? How are they answering their phone? What's their attitude? Are they scripted? Do they know what they need to say in order to wow the, your customer? When you set your appointments, what happens? You know, is there appointment confirmation? How are you pre-positioning your salesperson for success? Is there a, an email that goes out that says, hey, here is the, is there some sort of package that goes out that introduces people to you and to your company? The in-home sales presentation. What do your salespeople look like when they go out? Is there a uniform? A lot of guys now, a lot of guys, are using shirts and ties. My friend Brian um, Elias, 1-800-Hansons, I was there two or three months ago, and his sales guys are in shirts and ties, right? They look professional. They look like credible experts, right? Are you using technology? What are you walking in with? Are you walking in with a whole bunch of pitch books and samples and all of that, or are you just walking in as a I'm here as your consultant, I'm here as your trusted advisor to see what needs you have um, to be solved, you know, or what problem is here to be solved. What happens when you close the deal? What happens if the deal is not closed? These are all of those interaction points that you want to be thinking about. Project installation. What happens, by the way, what happens between sale and install? Right now, a lot of you have long lead times well, what are you doing with that customer to keep them engaged with you during those lead times, right? Um, do you have procedures for your people for inside the house, outside the house, right? What do your workmen look like? What do your installers look like? Um, project completion. How do you say thank you? How do you get their feedback? How do you get reviews? How do you get them to give you referrals, right? How do you get more business from them? These are all of the things that you need to remember. So at the end of the day, one of the big things to remember when it comes to, excuse me, customer experiences, people don't remember what you said. They'll remember how you made them feel. They'll remember how you made them feel. So think about, you know, how would you treat your grandma? How would you treat your grandma? in her house. That might be a good way for you to look at your customer experience with your customers. All right. So do this right. 
So do this right and you will have higher close rates. And where do your higher close rates come from? Well, they come from more repeat business and more referrals, more word of mouth, right? Referrals close at 40 to 50 percent, right? As opposed to 25, 30 percent. Repeat closes at 60, 70 percent. There's less price resistance, right? Because you want to be the premium price provider. You don't want to be in the middle and you definitely don't want to be at the bottom, especially now. Especially now. If you are not, if your business is not making money now, now, today, in 2017, it will never make money. Hear what I'm telling you. If you're not making money in 2017, you will never make money. All right? And so when I say make money, your business should be netting a minimum of 10%. Minimum 10%. All right? After everything is paid for, including your salary for any job that you're doing in the business. So if you're doing... $100,000 a month, your net profit at the end, after you've paid yourself a salary for all of the jobs that you do in the business, there should be $10,000 minimum left over. And again, I'm going to say it a third time. If you are not making money now, today, in 2017, you will never make money. Okay? So things, if you're not making money now, you better change some things. All right? Uh, lower lead costs, higher profits, greater equity value, and more uh, wealth. All right. So one of the things that I'm going to do um, here in the next 10 minutes or so, 15 minutes, is I'm going to show you what we do. And it's meant to be instructive. By the way, does anybody have any questions so far? Uh, I have fixed. Okay. Yeah, my audio went out, but I think it's back. All right. Anybody have any questions before I go to uh, kind of giving you some examples of what we are doing for our clients to help them build on their relationships to prolong that customer's value forever, basically? I say... You stay in touch with your customers and you wow your customers as long as you want to be in business. This is not a thing about this month or this year. This is about how long do you want to be in business, right? And if you want to sell your business at some point and cash out and get a big check, this is even more important. All right. So let me show you some of what we're doing. So we do this for our clients. This is meant to be, look, I'm going to show you what we do. Some of you may want us to do it for you. Some of you may not. That's fine. But look at this also as being instructive because I'm going to show you step by step. We've been doing this for eight years for contractors just like you, but then we did it for five years before that for ourselves and for our own home improvement businesses. So we got, uh, we've learned a lot about how to do this the right way. So you've got to look at five really important pieces. Aside from, now this is all aside from the customer experience. This is all aside from, if any of you want this, uh, uh, this blueprint that I showed you here, uh, just send me an email and I'll send you out the blueprint. Um, but this is basically step by step, this is how you build relationships with your customers. The first two things here, number one is, your commitment to creating customers for life. So as the owner of the business, you've got to be committed to creating customers for life. The second thing is you've got to earn the right to those referrals and the relationships and the repeat business. So that's all about the experience that you provide, the confidence that you give, the peace of mind that you give to your, to your customers. Steps three, four, and five are about appreciation, feedback, keeping in touch. All right, and those are the areas that I'm going to cover right now. So the main areas that you've got to look at is appreciation. You've got to look at getting feedback from your customers. You've got to know where you stand. You Today, you've got to be getting online reviews. Google, number one, you want to be getting Google reviews. Um, Facebook and Yelp are the other kind of two biggies that you want. For some of you, Angie's list is big, and now that 
Um, I don't know how many of you know this, uh, but Home Advisor bought Angie's List last week for like $550 million. Not sure what that whole thing is going to become, um, but some of, for some of you, um, Angie's List is, is a way that you get uh, a way that you get leads so that's also an important place but when we're talking about online online reviews just of of uh, just general people going and searching Google is right now the king um, gotta have a gotta have a way of keeping in touch with your customers and you gotta have a formal referral program in place so um, with our clients we make it simple they just send us in a spreadsheet we do all this stuff for them but um, first thing is you want to say thank you. So we will do, you know, we do stuff like what you see on the screen. We send out a thank you envelope with a thank you card in it. What we do is a, a bounce back uh, gift card. Looks like that. It's like a real credit card. You know, you've got the numbers embossed on there. I don't know if you guys can see that on the webcam. Um, but we put that in there and basically what we say to people is hey here is a here's a friends and family gift card with some value on it and use it for your next project or pass it on to a friend or a neighbor or coworker or something else um, that's you know that's one way the other way is to actually like physically send out a gift so this is what ours looks like. It's a box that says thank you all over it. Look, remember, this is all meant to be instructive. I'm not telling you this is the way it has to be. No, you could send out gifts. You could do it on your own. You can send out food. I like food. People love it. It works out good. Cookies, cakes, you know, whatever. We do cookies, you know. Um, but we send out, you know, big thing inside here is a a jar of cookies. Think about this. A week after the job is done, right? A week after the job is done, you send out a gift after they've already forgotten about you. Do you think that this is going to just blow people's minds? Do you think that this is going to give them a reason to talk about you to everybody that they know? Absolutely it is. By the way, what do you think about the companies that you spend a whole bunch of money with that don't do any of this stuff? Mm -hmm. happens to us all the time you know we just you know we just uh, uh, we just bought a house mortgage broker was also the real estate broker son of a bitch made a lot of money do you think I even got a phone call to say hey guys thank you for the business no did I get a thank you card no am I waiting for it no but I'm in the business so I pay attention to these things but come on Dude, you just made a bunch of money. He got it on both ends, real estate commission and the mortgage commission. Like, you don't even send out a thank you card. You don't send out a little gift, something. Same thing with you guys. People just spent. See, one of the things that you got to consider, too, is, you know, let's just go with $8,000. That seems to be kind of the average of whether it's roofing windows, siding, or not siding, but roofing windows, bathrooms, HVAC, those kinds of things. Your average is like eight grand, let's say, you know, $8,000. To you, $8,000 really is only seven or 800 bucks. To them, it's $8,000. That's a trip to Europe for their family, right? So, you got to be aware of this and you've got to really think about um, you know how am I going to impress people how am I going to impress people and one of the ways to impress the crap out of them is by sending them a thank you after the job is done right and if you have to build it into your price this is one of the things I get I get people say to me well you know I'm already done with the job why do I have to spend money after it well don't spend it Put it into the job. Put it into the job. It's fine. It's all about the customer experience, right? If you don't have enough margin in there to send out a stupid gift to somebody, you're pricing your jobs way wrong, right? And you're probably overpaying for marketing somewhere anyway. Anyway, thank you. Say thank you. When we also start sending out emails. We start the stickiness. 
we want to say thank you and we want to communicate with them in their mailbox and in their email inbox both places and a lot of our clients are also calling on the phone but you don't want to kill them with with the phone customer reviews we talked about this I'm not going to go into all of this with you guys um, but here's the thing the more reviews you have on the right sites the right sites being Google Yelp and Facebook the more leads you're going to get all right um, these are the big three right now um, one of the things that you need is a system a system that's going to help you with getting the feedback and then taking that feedback and posting it online our system is called authentic feedback what we do is as part of the thank you box or the thank you card that goes out we request feedback we drive them to a site I'll show you in a minute we send them email asking them for their feedback we can text them and ask them for their feedback right once we get their feedback depending on whether it's good or it's bad feedback so let's just say it's good then we're gonna send them to a page that asks them to post that feedback online Google Yelp Facebook what you know wherever we want to drive them to if it's if it's bad we don't want to send them out to a review site we want to solve the problem for them right then and there so we want to let them know hey we're really sorry about the experience and we want to make it right all right and so immediately you want to get an alert that says hey we got a bad review we gotta go take care of this now all right and our system will text you email you you know whatever you want so that you know um, we even have an app um, our, our authentic feedback uh, has an app that you guys can put on your phones on your tablets and it basically goes through all of the same process it'll it'll have it'll send a text to your customer right then and there so if you're if your installer is there on the job or your salesperson is there on the job you just say hey you just go to the app it's right here on my phone and I just hit the button and um, it's going to take you to you know this thing here and you put in their name their email and their phone number you hit check in and boom they're going to get a text right and then when they hit that link right there it's going to take them to your review page and then you know same thing if you get good feedback it's going to ask them to go and it's going to look on their phone to see what they have and it's going to take them to the Google for you know if you don't know the Google Maps app is where the reviews live right so to open up Google Maps on their phone so that they can leave their review if it's if it's bad then obviously and it works with Yelp and Facebook and all of that but if it's bad it stops right there because you don't want them to go post online so you want to have something you want to have a system that's going to help you with that in between there um, so that it 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 helps you determine who's unhappy so that you can uh, remedy the problem before they go tell everybody online all right um, and then this is you know we post it on your website and all over the place if this is something you're interested in we offer this as a standalone system it's really inexpensive if you're interested just let us know and we'll be happy to uh, go through it with you as far as keeping in touch with customers they've got to get something from you every single month and so what we do is every single month they're getting an email one most months they're getting two emails um, one from the owner one from the company and then quarterly we're doing physical printed newsletters which by the way there's no better way of staying in touch with customers than with a physical printed newsletter all right so again if this is stuff that you're interested in I can go into detail just you know reach out to us and we'll be happy to help you um, with this you've also got to have a referral program so this is just kind of a snapshot of some of the elements of our formal referral rewards program which we essentially give to our clients um, the thing is is that you got to have a system where people can um, can make referrals and really important 
you've got to constantly be talking about referrals. One of the biggest mistakes that people make is that they only talk about referrals one time and that's it. Then they never talk about them again. Well, in our system, we're talking about referrals all the time because we want to constantly kind of be reminding people about, about referrals and how important they are to us. Referral is a tough lead to make, probably the toughest because of all of the p things that are involved, but there are things that you can do to get more and more of them, all right? So that is how uh, that is how we do it, and for our clients, you know, basically we act as your outsourced relationship marketing um, uh, expert. We do it all for you, uh, low, pretty low fees, less than what you would pay somebody in your office to do it. Um, we're you know fortunate to work with a bunch of really great companies big and small uh, plumbing HVAC windows roofing siding bathroom um, bunch of companies um, so I went a little bit over um, by by a few minutes um, anybody have any questions I don't see any questions in the question box um, a lot of people still on the call on the on the webinar um, I could stick around for a few minutes. I got this blocked out till 12. So if you want me to answer any questions, just throw them into the question box. Did I do that great of a job that you have no questions? <laughs> okay, Ray has a question. Yes, you will have access to the recorded version. You are welcome. Any other questions? about specifics. Anybody anybody not having an amazing year? I won't say your name or anything. It's just it's confidential in the question box. But is anybody not having an amazing year? Maybe you don't want to admit it. It's just me. What? Are you serious? That's awesome. Good for you. Wow. David. Great month. He said, don't tell. I won't, but it's pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. David, what's your company? You're, I know you, don't I? What is your company? Uh, Rick, how much does it cost? Um... I, I don't know. You gotta, you gotta um, just go, uh, either email me or, or uh, call the number on the screen, and we'll set up a meeting and we'll kind of walk through it with you. We do different programs for different companies. Um, you know, we have clients that pay us, you know, a lot. We have clients that pay us a little. It really depends on your uh, on your company. Do, you know, that's a good idea, William. Um, do you have a video teaching employees how to ask for reviews? Um, I don't. Um, it's not that hard. Maybe I can put something together. I know you're a client. Um, maybe I can put something together. Let me make a note of that. Um, I think that's something we can we can put together. Video for staff asking for reviews. Yep. Um, do you recommend any other online review sites like Consumer Affairs, Home Advisor, or Angie's List? So Home Advisor, if you have if you have reviews on Home Advisor, they will show up in search. Um, so Home Advisor is okay. Um, now, um, again, Angie's List was acquired by Home Advisor, so I'm not sure what they're going to do. I don't know how that's going to work. 
But I would say to you right now, um, I don't know what your company is. I don't know how big you are. I don't know what market you're in, John. But you need Google reviews. You need Google reviews unless you are relying on Angie's list for leads. You need Google reviews is what you need. I wouldn't waste time with consumer affairs or you know these other minimal review sites. Google is Google is where it's at. Um, David, do you want me to, thank you, <laughs> um, do you want me to reach out to you? You gave me your email address. Do you want me to reach out to you? Uh, just let me know. Portland or, sorry, I'm just kind of going through. Me and David are having a long conversation. Um, one person has said they're not having a great year. Um, if there's anything that I can do, um, you know who you are. If there's anything you uh, I can do to help you, send me an email. We can set up a, a quick conversation um, and see. You know, maybe I can give you a few things that you can tweak to change that. Um, uh, Rick, uh, again, reach out to me. Um, person who said their business is not great, um, you can also reach out to me. Um, uh, William, um, I'm going to make a note and have uh, Yanni reach out to you to answer your question. William Bennett. The, well, I know what the problem is. I'll just, I'll just, um, I'll have her reach out to you. Um, David, there'll be a replay available, and I don't give out slide decks, but there is a replay that will be available. Um, I don't know marketing conference in Seattle really good. I'll look into it. I'll look into it. Um, all right, everybody. Um, David, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll send you, hold on, I'm going to send you an email. Maybe we could set up a, a chat. Um, sorry, just making notes. Um, all right, everybody. I hope you got value out of this. Um, as always, um, you are all on the uh, the wealthy contractor list, so you have access to podcasts and uh, these trainings, newsletters, um, and all of that stuff is free. No obligation. It's all free. If you are interested in a strategy session um, where we walk through a, a, a the thing called an opportunity map. We look for opportunity in your business. There's no obligation. Uh, you don't have to buy anything. Um, it's just something we help you do to see where there's opportunity in your business to grow. So if you're interested in that, um, you can go to this URL that's right down here. It's a little bit weird because I shortened it, but it's tiny.cc. It's not a .com. It's a .cc forward slash G-F-O-U-R-1. You can go there and set up a strategy session. You'll get a call from Addie or Jamie, and they'll they'll um, go through the strategy session with you. I guarantee you're going to find opportunity in your business, or we're going to help you find opportunity in your business. Um, all right, so that's it. Thanks for being here. The replay will be up uh, within 48 hours by the you know by um, today's Wednesday. So by Friday, replay will be up. Um, anybody want to reach out to me? My email address. Well, you'll get a you'll get a uh, uh, automatic uh, thing from GoToWebinar. You can just reply to that. It'll come to me. But my email address is Brian with an I at g number four mg dot com g four mg dot com. Um, and uh, thank you all. And I will talk to you next month. I'll see you next month on our 
um, wealthy contractor training by all.